Hello everyone, I am Richardson from DG Vaishnav College. So today in this video, we'll let us have a briefing about what is molecular docking and how it serves an important role in the uh, drug discovery and everything. Okay, so let us have a short briefing. So before that, we need to uh, pay some attention towards the word called docking. So what this docking actually mean? So here you find to get its uh, meaning, right? You are making an attempt to find the best matching between the two molecules. Here I take the two molecules as one will be your target and the other will be your ligand. The target can be your protein, the enzyme or the receptor for that particular ligand which you choose. So docking, you are you're finding the best matching between the two molecules, right? What this docking method actually does? See, you are finding or you are predicting the preferred orientation of one ligand when bound in an active site to form a stable complex. So you have the target, you have the ligand, we have two molecules as a whole. So what you are doing now, you are just finding the best orientation of the target or the ligand in order to making it as a best match to form a stable complex. This should be of a very important part where you are forming a stable complex. That is very important here. Okay, that's the second thing. So, um, when you see the docking studies uh, finds more application only in the drug discovery. You know that the drug discovery is not such a joke. Uh, okay, you are implementing it as a medicine to the humankind, mankind and everything, even to animals, plants, etc. So, it's not just a, a joking thing that it has a... Uh, many efforts to be taken. It may take some years to decades to find the drug and uh, quite it's a costly. It, uh, it costs a lot of money. Okay. So, but this docking actually uh, cuts off all the uh, uh, negatives and brings out every negative into positivity. How? It uh, cuts down your research timeline and the cost by reducing the wet lab experiment so you no need to buy all sort of very costly chemicals and something and uh, do a trial you just need a computer modeling you can do the trial over there and after the successful uh, computation data you can go for the wet lab experiment which prevents your money which also saves it's time saving and money saving right so this is all about the introduction for the docking so now uh, you can find uh, a picture over here which indicates a lock and you have a key and a person attempting to open the lock. Let the person be uh, the scientist or the person who works on the research of uh, preparing a new drug. So this man is trying to open the lock, right? So a uh, thing which you have to notice over here is you can't just uh, suppose you imagine I have the key I uh, turn the key upside down and I try to insert and open the lock is it possible yeah there is no chance of uh, uh, keeping this key upside down and opening it because it does not fit into the cavity of that lock so here the lock you can call it as your target and the key you can call it as your ligand so, the very important thing which you have to notice, you should know the perfect orientation of how to use the key, the particular position to uh, hold the key to the cavity of the target so that you can unlock. Okay, so see the person is having the right direction of the key and it perfectly you can insert it and after inserting you have to notice a very important point that the direction in which it should be oriented. Right? So, it just inserts and you can't uh, turn it over the left uh, of, to open the lock. Generally, we have, the, we have seen the lock and we use the right side direction to open it. Right? So, it has a particular direction where you have to orient the key in order to unlock it. Right? The same mechanism applies to the molecular docking where you dock a ligand to the target. So, here you can find that your protein acts as the lock 
and your ligand acts as the key as we discussed in the previous slide. So, you can have the pictorial representation over here, you have the target with a perfect cavity and you have the ligand which matches this cavity and when you subject it to docking you find it forms a stable complex and this is what actually happens in the docking process. So, uh, hence we had a good idea about what is the docking and had a brief account on it. So, now let us uh, move on to know what the molecular docking actually aims at. So, we have some two important aim that it aims to achieve an optimized conformation for both the receptor and the ligand uh, the same way as the lock and the key. So, a perfect conformation, the optimized conformation for both receptor and ligand that is one. And number two, orientation between the protein and the ligand such that the free energy of the overall system is minimized. So, here we see the energy minimization. So, like uh, you are taking the lock and attempting to open the key, you know, you have inserted, you should know the direction in which the key to be oriented. The same way the protein and the ligand must be oriented so that the free energy of the system is minimized. So, these all things are computed, just your computer does these works. It just calculates all the possible energies for different possible orientation of the ligand by providing you with some docking calculations by resulting with the docking score data. So, you can find here I have many ligands surrounded and I have the receptor over here and I have a question mark that which ligand suits perfect into the cavity of that target how it has been oriented here. So, that is very great important thing that for each and every ligand the computer does the energy minimization calculation and finally gives you the docking score. So, using a scoring function that correctly ranks the candidates docking. So, each ligand will be docked and finally, I get a, a list of docking score and in that you should notice the more negative docking score or the least value of the docking score among every day among the full data obtained will have higher binding affinity with the protein. So, we will be working out uh, in the software in the next video about how to perform a molecular docking with a particular ligand. Okay. So, how to see the docking scores and how it helps in uh, finding which has the proper orientation and which has higher affinity to bind with the protein uh, everything will be uh, done practically so that you can also try it in your uh, uh, laptop on your desktop. So, we will see it later in the next video. Now, let us move on to the importance of molecular docking. So, what this molecular docking does, we, uh, we saw two aims, no? the aim will be compiled into the uh, result that gives the importance of the molecular docking, that the first thing is the scoring function, as I said the docking score, it will predict the binding affinity. So, the higher the negative value of the docking score, the higher the affinity of the ligand to the protein. Okay? And the second important thing is that identification of ligands building geometry that is the pose that is the orientation which does the energy minimization. So, you know that uh, high energy systems are highly unstable. So, here the energy minimization takes place so that your finished product that is the dock after your molecular docking, you get a stable complex as we discussed earlier for the docking, we, we must form a stable complex. And finally, it leads to the rational design of the drug. So, very simple approach, the two aim and the two importance give you the uh, very favorable decision to prepare a drug for a certain medication. So, here we have uh, two types of docking. So, one will be your uh, rigid docking, the other you find it as the flexible docking. Okay? So, the rigid docking uh, follows the mechanism same as the lock and key mechanism, but you have the flexible docking to follow the induced fit. So, the word itself gives you the proper definition of what type of uh, uh, thing is happening over these two types of docking. The rigid docking which means that 
you can see here the internal geometry of the ligand and your target is retained okay see you have the protein the target it has no change in its geometry it is rigid maintained rigid and you see the ligand it is also rigid and this you call as this type of docking as rigid docking but in case of flexible docking you can see that the enumeration on the rotation of one of the molecules uh, okay so you see here the protein is there and it has changed accordingly it has oriented accordingly uh, to fit the ligand into its cavity so among these not all are considered to be perfect Okay, so in case of flexible docking, you can see here, every rotation, the energy is calculated, later the most optimum pose is selected. So quite you will not understand what, uh, what rotation they are doing like something. So we will be performing an example uh, using the software available. So that you can understand how you are, the energy is calculated while it is rotating and how you can uh, predict the most optimum pose from the docking scores available. So it's all about the types of docking. Okay. Uh, the next one. Is that uh, the docking can be between uh, some three types of uh, thing one can be your uh, protein ligand interaction the other is your protein protein and the third one is your protein nucleotide as you see it's over here see here it displays the protein and ligand interaction docking and here you can see the protein and protein docking and here you can see the protein and the nucleotide your DNA uh, your genetic material and uh, here you have that docking okay okay so you saw that the docking is between uh, some three uh, type of interactions so the protein is here and you have the ligand they fit into the cavity how it is placed properly and how it is interacting or how it is binding with these ligands how the ligand is fitting uh, is binding with the protein so you have a question right so that can be understood by the different type of interactions which take place between the target protein that is the receptor and the ligand some four types of forces are mentioned over here one will be your electrostatic forces of interaction two is your electrodynamic force of interaction steric forces and solvents related forces Electrostatic forces, so the name says it deals with the charges residing in the matter. Electrodynamic forces deals with the van der Waals interactions, the weak interactions. The steric forces governed by the entropy. What this entropy actually does? You have an example, right? When you limit or if you decrease the entropy, the energy minimization will take place. If your entropy is not limited, energy minimization will not take place and it will create a high energy system and finally you will get only an unstable complex rather getting a stable complex. So the entropy, the steric forces of interaction must be maintained which is governed by the entropy. And the last is your solvent related forces. As you know, the solvent also has the ability to change the orientation or the geometry or it governs the structural changes in your protein and ligand interaction, right? So these kind of solvent related forces are commonly the hydrogen bonding and the hydrophobic interactions. Yeah? So later on when we uh, do the molecular docking with the software, we can identify the hydrogen bond and hydrophobic interactions and we can calculate those. How many hydrogen bonds are present between that uh, uh, protein and that uh, ligand and how much of hydrophobic interactions are taking place and everything can be uh, visualized through that software. So all these things which you just read as a theory in this video, it will be available as a visualization using that molecular docking softwares. Okay, we have around uh, some key stages in docking which have been uh, um, shown here in a flow chart. So, you have some four stages, right? The first one will be your target or the receptor selection and preparation. So, this one you have to do and the second thing the ligand selection and preparation and you do the docking and finally you are evaluating the docking results. 
So see here, so you're selecting the uh, target protein and you have the ligand, it's just subject to the system preparation, so it starts docking, yeah. See the arrow mark, you have you kept the system, right? So the system will run all the calculations and you're doing the synthesis in your computer system rather doing, or rather performing a wet lab experiment. So then the docking calculation is done and finally the docking scoring, so it is arranging in a form of ranking and finally you are getting the post processing and you have the docking done. See ya. This is all about the key stages in docking. So let us brief a little about the key stages. So yeah, so the receptor selection and preparation. So the receptor selection, uh, quite this being a techie world nowadays, you can get everything available in your internet source. So for building the receptor, you just need to download your particular 3D structure of the receptor from an online portal of PDB, which has an expansion of protein data bank. The RCSB website will help you to get the protein data bank and you can type the desired protein receptor which you want you know, for performing the docking uh, uh, to perform successful docking. So you should note that um, the available structure should be processed and the receptor should be biologically active and stable so only then you will get a stable complex after your successful docking and you can find here the identification of the active sites so that's the main thing which you have to do while you select the receptor okay and the next key stage is that uh, the ligand selection so the ligand selection is nothing because you are going to take a ligand which is already available or the ligand which you have synthesized so you know the structure of the ligand no so you have many data databases available to get the actual proper structure of the ligand you can access through the internet to the zinc database you can also use the pubchem so we'll see how to use the pubchem and everything and we also have the protein dot plus uh, so you where you can do all the docking calculations the energy calculation and everything so you will be later on performing uh, we'll see in the videos uh, how to use all these things and you can also draw use a chem sketch or you have the chem 3d draw or chem draw and everything so you can draw your ligand uh, um, uh, of your decision okay so then you can uh, use these ligand for docking so final stage the third stage will be your docking so the ligand is docked onto the receptor and the interactions are checked they run through the computation and the scoring function is finally generated the docking score and depending on which the best fit the ligand is selected so you know know which is the best fit so the docking score which has the more negative value or the least value will have the highest affinity binding to the protein so here we can find that a lot of research works are going on using the molecular docking that is exclusive with the computational works okay so which uh, which make the work easy as we saw the advantages are more and cost efficient and everything so it easily uh, gives way paves way to uh, design a drug uh, for a particular medication. Here you can find some three types of drugs which have been mentioned that is the ribavirin, the remdesivir and the luteolin complex. Right? So you are well aware I think so that these medications were introduced in the past year uh, in these uh, two months uh, for that uh, SARS-CoV-19 as a medication for human beings. right? But each had uh, some sort of uh, difficulties and finally now they are coming over with the remdesivir then now they have uh, introduced a new one and everything. It's keep on going so how these kind of drugs have been introduced and how they just they tell us that these kind of drugs can be prescribed for this medication so the first thing they do before doing wet lab experiments is that they perform a molecular docking using the computation software okay so let us uh, see uh, how they are doing it okay so I have a research paper over here uh, from uh, science direct the computational screening of antagonists against the SARS-CoV-19 coronavirus by molecular docking. So they have done a molecular docking study. So let us view this research paper and analyze what they have done it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So here you can find uh, that research paper from the International Journal of Antimicrobial uh, Activities. Yeah, okay. What are the highlights given here? You can find that the luteolin and the chloroquine. Yeah, of course, we are well aware of this drug, right? So the luteolin and chloroquine bind to the main protease of SARS-CoV-2 
then the binding site of the luteolin are highly consistent with the main protease inhibitor so they have highlighted about the luteolin in this particular paper right so it's on may 8 2020 okay uh, luteolin it is a traditional uh, medication in china which is which is an lo dye which is obtained from a plant okay so that's the thing you can just uh, google out to know more about this drug uh, so they have found that that uh, the protease of SARS COVID 19. So, this particular uh, data they have obtained, the, uh, they have taken from the protein data bank and they have just uh, introduced this luteolin drug and they tried with all the drugs which we have listed before and they found that the luteolin was uh, doing good. So, that is the thing they have uh, reported in the paper. Then the luteolin can be used as a potent compound against SARS COVID 19. So, from the molecular docking the details, they have given this kind of statement in this paper. And uh, see, the binding of luteolin is conducive to study of antiviral mechanism of the traditional Chinese medicine. So, yeah, that is the thing which we have. Oh, these are the highlights of this paper. Okay, so it's just an example of how to view you uh, how the molecular docking is going on in the research work. Okay, I'm not going in detail about this. We'll just see the features which I have done over here. Uh, the introduction part, let us leave it and let's uh, go on to the materials and methods they have uh, used. See, uh, they have taken the SARS-CoV-19 that uh, protease enzyme. No, they are, you can refer here. Yeah, you have it right. The model of the COVID-19 main protease was downloaded from the protein data bank. See the website which we were uh, prescribing, you know, the RCSB website, where you can get all the uh, 3D structure of that uh, particular uh, protein. And uh, then they did uh, molecular docking. See, you have the molecular docking over here. And see, they have used the software Autodoc Vena. So these are some sort of free softwares which are available and downloadable. So you can use this or you have the online server softwares like MQ which we will be uh, uh, detailing in the next video on how to use MQ software to do molecular docking and see they have optimized the model as the docking target. See all the theory part which we have studied has been into application in the research work and you can see the luteolin, the honeysuckle plant from which they have taken it and finally uh, they move on to the results and discussions. Just uh, they have taken many protein like they have taken 3CL protease, then they have taken um, the PL Pro, RD, RB, like everything. Let us uh, go with this 3CL protease alone. Okay. So, here you can uh, see that uh, you have some four drugs, right? The luteolin, N3, then remdesivir, and chloroquine. So, they were started, uh, doing the docking study uh, with these four drugs with that. Uh, Protease, 3CL protease, the COVID-19 uh, protein. Okay, so they have taken that from the protein data bank and done some study. So they have taken the uh, 3CL protease uh, and uh, they have done the docking studies, all the interactions which we have learned here. Uh, let's see what they have done. So they have, um, here they have mentioned about the hydrogen bonds, right? See, you see the luteolin uh, formed five hydrogen bonds with these amino acids uh, all are listed here. In the docking, we can find all those amino acids, uh, visual, we can visualize it. And you see that um, the uh, N3, it formed the three hydrogen bonds. Huh? So, it formed three hydrogen bonds and here you find that um, um, your uh, here you have the three hydrogen bond with the rem deceiver and finally uh, you have one hydrogen bond with the chloroquine right see the luteolin one two three four five and here you see one two three and here you can find one two hydrogen bonds and here you find one hydrogen bond and with this they have concluded that rather than these three medications this would do a very good uh, purpose this would serve the purpose Right? So, it will act as a good medication uh, against the SARS-CoV-19 and uh, see all these have been given. See it has been perfectly fit, it has occupied a large volume and also uh, it has a st uh, strong hydrophobic interactions and many hydrogen bonds. So, the protein has a tight binding with that, uh, uh, sorry the ligand has the tight binding a higher affinity with that particular protease ligand. So, this is what uh, they have done through all these research works.
okay so that's uh, we had a uh, idea how the research works have been going on so many papers are available uh, for in this uh, pandemic situation that about all the covid 19 papers are uh, available in the science direct for free you can download all the pdf and uh, you can um, get some idea about how the research works are going on for that using the molecular docking softwares okay it's so all the thing which we have discussed now it has been visualized here and uh, yeah these are the references which have been taken for all the uh, points which have been given right from the first uh, uh, page so you can uh, refer and get more details uh, about that so that's all for today so in the next video uh, uh, you can follow that how to perform molecular docking so now we had a great idea about i hope you had a good idea a good knowledge about uh, what is molecular docking and how it is applicable in computational chemistry and in research works and so in the later on video we'll have a practical session on how to use a certain online servers of our softwares to perform this molecular docking and do the all sorts of calculations which we studied here okay thank you